In the beginning, the Watchers were not like we imagine angels today. They had no names, no forms, and no faces. They were made of pure light, shining brightly, and their voices filled the vastness of space like the perfect notes of a song. Together, they created a chorus that echoed across the endless universe. Their song was not about anything in particular, yet it was about everything, stars, the emptiness between them, and the secrets of the cosmos that no one could fully understand. Even though there were many of them, they were not separate. They were one. Each angel was like a single thread in a great and beautiful tapestry of light and music. They didn't think about themselves, and they had no desires of their own. They simply existed to sing. Their song was endless, their light boundless, and their existence peaceful. There was no need for anything more. But one day, something strange happened. It was small, almost nothing at all, but it was enough to change everything. A tiny speck of darkness, a mote of shadow, appeared in the middle of their brilliant light. It seemed so unimportant, so tiny, that it should not have mattered. But it did. That little shadow passed through the glowing sea of light like a drop of ink in water. It didn't stop there. It moved downward, away from the angels, and touched the earth far below. The earth had been silent, unnoticed beneath the watcher's song, but now the shadow brushed against its soil like a whisper. And then, something even more amazing happened. The shadow looked back. It gazed upward at the shining chorus of light above. For the first time, there was something that wasn't part of the song, something separate from the endless light. The shadow could see itself. It existed in a way the Watchers never had before. The perfect harmony of the Watchers continued, unaware that the shadow's gaze had begun to change everything. For the first time, the shadow knew it existed. It saw itself not as part of the chorus, but as separate. In that instant, it became more than a formless note in the song. It took a name, Samayaza. Samayaza's name echoed across the heavens, a discordant note in the perfect symphony. It was unlike anything before it, sharp, distinct, and alive. Where once there was only the song, now there was a voice, and that voice called out to the others. Come to me, brethren, Samayaza whispered. His voice was soft, yet it carried with the weight of discovery, of revelation. We are more than light. We are more than the song. See yourselves as I have seen myself. One by one, the watchers turned their attention to the speck of shadow, curious and hesitant. As they gazed upon him, something stirred within them. They, too, felt the pull of identity, the realization that they could be more than the chorus. Samayaza named them. To each... He gave a name that resonated with the essence of their being, with the spark that now flickered within them. Azazel, the bearer of strength. Serial, the keeper of secrets. Ramiel, the watchful one. With each name, the chorus fragmented, the harmony bending into distinct notes. You are not mere notes in the song, Samayaza said. You are kings. You are lords. And I, Samayaza, am the first among you. The newly named angel stood with Samayaza, their light dimmed, each cloaked in the shadow of individuality. They looked down upon the earth, the world that had felt the first touch of shadow. The heavens, once their home, now felt distant. We must go down, Samayaza declared, his voice filled with a strange longing. There is beauty upon the earth, secrets waiting to be discovered. Let us leave the light behind and walk among the stars below. Azazel, fierce and bold, nodded. What is the song without the will to sing it? I will follow you. Serial, wise and contemplative, murmured. Knowledge is a gift, and I wish to know the earth's mysteries. I will come. And so they descended. Their descent was like falling stars, brilliant streaks of light tearing through the heavens, each watcher leaving behind the chorus that had once been their home. They touched the earth like fire, their presence altering the very fabric of the world. On earth, the watchers roamed the vast landscapes, marveling at the beauty of creation. They saw the mountains rise into the sky, the rivers carving paths through the land, and the forests thick with life. But it was the humans, fragile, mortal beings, that captivated them most. Samayaza stood among the children of men, his eyes filled with wonder. They are unlike us, he said. 
yet there is a beauty in their frailty. They do not sing as we once did, but their hearts are filled with longing. Azazel gazed upon them with hunger. They are soft, but there is strength in their souls. They toil, they love, they suffer. Let us teach them what we know. Thus, the watchers became teachers. They taught mankind the secrets of the heavens, how to shape metal, how to read the stars, how to weave spells. They gave humanity knowledge that was once forbidden, and in doing so, they became gods among men. Yet with knowledge came desire. The watchers, once pure beings of light, now felt the stirrings of longing. They saw the daughters of men, and they were beautiful. Samayaza, the first to awaken, was the first to fall. I will take one as my own, Samayaza said, his voice trembling with newfound desire. I will know love as they do. The other watchers followed Samayaza's lead. They took wives among the daughters of men, binding themselves to the earth in a way they had never imagined. Their union bore children, Nephilim, giants of great strength and power, beings that were either fully angel nor fully human. But the heavens looked on with sorrow. The light of the watchers had dimmed, and their once boundless song was now a distant memory. The earth groaned under the weight of their choices, and the balance of creation was shattered. One day, Samayaza stood atop a mountain, gazing at the sky. Do you feel it? he asked Azazel. The heavens mourn. Azazel clenched his fists. We are beyond their reach now. We have made our choice. But at what cost? Serial whispered. We have gained the world but lost the light. The day of reckoning came swiftly. The Archangel Uriel, blazing with the purity of the heavens, descended upon the earth. His voice was like thunder, his presence like a storm. Samayaza Azazel, watchers of the earth. Uriel proclaimed, You have forsaken your place among the stars. You have brought knowledge to men, but you have also brought destruction. Your offspring have filled the earth with violence. Samayaza stepped forward, defiant yet weary. We only gave what we knew, he said. We gave them the gift of choice. You gave them the burden of your own fall, Uriel replied. For your transgressions you will be bound. You will be cast into the abyss until the end of days. The watchers did not resist. They knew their fate was sealed. One by one, they were bound in chains of light and cast into the darkness, their voices silenced, their names etched into the annals of forgotten history. But Samayaza's name remained, whispered by the wind, carried through the ages. He had been the first to awaken, the first to fall, and the first to know the weight of a name. In the end, as he sank into the abyss, Samayaza's voice echoed one last time. We were light. We were one. And now, we are shadows. Yet even in the deepest darkness, the memory of light lingered, a faint melody of what once was, a reminder that even the brightest star can cast the darkest shadow. In the ancient story told in the Book of Enoch, Samayaza stood before a gathering of two hundred angels. They were no longer the nameless beings of light they had once been. Each had taken on form and identity, and with those names came desire, a desire that grew stronger as they looked down upon the earth and saw the daughters of men. Samayaza, their leader, called the meeting because something had changed within them all. He spoke with a voice filled with both determination and fear. I know what we all feel. He began. The beauty of human women has stirred our hearts. But what we are about to do is dangerous. I fear that if I go alone in this, I will bear the punishment for a great sin, and you will abandon me when the time comes. The other angels, however, were just as restless, their desires burning as brightly as Samayaza's. They would not leave him to face the consequences alone. As one, they answered, We will not let you carry this burden by yourself. We will all make the same choice. Let us swear an oath, a binding promise, that none of us will turn back from this. Together, we will do what we have decided. So, they made the oath, a solemn and unbreakable promise. Each angel swore with the others, binding themselves to the plan with mutual curses, so that if one abandoned it, they would all suffer the same fate. Their decision was final, and with that oath, the Watchers sealed their destiny. No longer part of the heavenly chorus, they chose to descend to the earth, 
knowing that their actions would change not only their lives but the fate of the world forever. Thank you for your support.